How's it going, Raider Nation? My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily Podcast, the greatest Raiders podcast in the world. Let's talk about it, everyone. You know you want to talk about it. You know you want to hear me talk about it. The Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders are 2-0. They have their first game in Vegas against the Saints, where no one in the world, no one in the media, no one thought the Raiders could do it. They did it. They win by 10 and they beat the New Orleans Saints and Drew Brees. They did everything they had to do to win. The offense was explosive. No one can stop Darren Waller. No one can stop this guy. Waller is just way too good. This guy is unstoppable. They tried Jenkins. That ain't gonna work. They try anyone. It's not gonna work. You can't put a linebacker on him. You can't put a safety on him. You can't put nobody on this guy. As long as the Raiders offense can continue to play like this, they are going to be a matchup nightmare for every single team they play. This is a lot better team than last season. Like I said, heading into this year, Derek Carr's not going to be asked to do a lot. Now, it's a very simple thing. It's a West Coast spread sometimes. Offense. All he really has to do is get the ball out of his hands quickly. Every once in a while, he's going to be able to take a shot down the field because they have Henry Ruggs. Yes, he has missed Henry Ruggs in the last couple of games. He keeps overthrowing him. I wish that wouldn't happen, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit because I think that's going to be ending when I talk about the next team the Raiders are going to be playing. But as for this game against the Saints, the Raiders... Really, no one thought they would do what they did. No one thought. They got a lot of guys banged up in this game, which isn't good. Josh Jacobs got injured. Jalen Richard had to go in there and, of course, fumble the ball. Every time a guy touches the ball, I get nervous. And he never lets me down because he fumbled again. They really should call up Theo Riddick. I'm not even joking. Jalen Richard has no business touching the football. The guy seems like every time, either when he, remember, he used to return punts, he would muff one. I mean, this guy, I don't like it. I don't like him touching the football. Yes, he has good speed. There's no doubt about it. But his vision is terrible. His hands are terrible. If he's in open space, the guy will probably go for a touchdown. But it's hard to get there. It really is with that guy. I don't tr- trust them. I just think Booker should be the guy. But I know it was at that point, I believe Josh Jacobs was hurt, was in the game. So Gruden really had no choice. Speaking of John Gruden. His first game as the Las Vegas head coach, Las Vegas Raiders head coach, very first game, primetime game. People have been calling John Gruden conservative, too conservative in the fourth quarter. What does John Gruden do to silence the critics? He goes out there with, with hardly no time left, throws Daniel Carlson out there, knowing Daniel Carlson, we all know, this guy could either, he could miss a five-yard field goal. We don't, he's so up and down, we we don't know what's going to happen, right? Daniel Carlson goes out there for a 53-yard field goal and nails it to seal the game. John Gruden said, listen, I could, I'm, I'm in Vegas, I'm going to gamble on my kicker right now. If I can hit this field goal, the game is over. If I can, if I miss it, I know my defense, they're not going to probably stop Drew Brees. Because he just watched the Saints run up the field on them. And the defense, still no pass rush. That has to start changing. Max Crosby, where are you? Carl Nassib, where are you? I mean, anyone, anyone, get a sack. Mo Hurst, Malik Collins. You guys got to start getting after the quarterback. You got to start getting after him. This is a 41-year-old quarterback. The linebacker position, it's still really shaky. But... We got to give credit where credit is due. Nicholas Morrow, big interception in this game, comes through big time for your Las Vegas Raiders. Probably the play of the game, to be honest. That was such a big play. Nicholas Morrow, huge play. Huge respect to Nicholas Morrow. This guy had a really rough game in Carolina, you know, but he had to deal with the signals. He got kind of thrown in there. So in this game, he played much better. Maybe that's all he needs this time. Nicholas Morrow might not be that bad in the end if he has time. Remember, Kwiatkowski was supposed to be, you know, the leading middle linebacker. Nicholas Morrow's kind of taking over that role. Corey Littleton can do it, 
But Nicholas Morrow already knows the signals from last year. Already knows the playbook. So they're a lot more comfortable with Morrow out there. Call, you know, with the signals and things like that. So, listen, I think the guy played well. I think that defense has to play better. Not every game can be a shootout. For the Raiders offense, I think they're one of the best in the National Football League. Josh Jacobs, in my opinion, is the best running back in the National Football League. Darren Waller is the best tight end in the National Football League. You, you can have Kittle. You can have Kelsey. I'm taking Waller. Because Waller is a matchup nightmare. And he showed the world on primetime, on Monday Night Football, on ESPN, why he is the best tight end in the National Football League. The Saints couldn't get anyone to cover this guy. They tried a linebacker, didn't work. They tried a safety, it didn't work. They even tried a cornerback, and it didn't work. You can't stop Darren Waller. So Derek Carr doesn't have to do that much. Basically, West Coast scheme, West Coast spread. It's okay. You get the ball, you settle down, you get the ball out of your hands very fast. And yeah, they may only be four-yard passes, but like I told you guys, the Raiders built something special on offense. It's called speed. And Derek Carr has it all over the place this season. So these guys, with these yards after the catch, they call it yak. Yards after the catch. That's what the West Coast offense is. That's what these guys can do. That's what they can provide. That's what Darren Waller does. Henry Ruggs can't even do that. But Henry Ruggs' job, really, is to run straight down the field. Now, Derek Carr has to start connecting on those big bombs because those big bombs are going to be open. I mean, he missed one against Carolina and he missed one against the Saints. He's got to start connecting on those. He's got to. Because it's going to be open. Like I said, the whole point of Henry Ruggs is he's taking the top off. And a lot of people, if you remember, when John Gruden got Antonio Brown, that's kind of what John Gruden wanted out of Antonio Brown, to do just that. But he was going to do a little bit of everything. Right now, they have Henry Ruggs just taking the top off and helping out the guys underneath. But let me tell you something. That guy's fast. So he's going to be open. So if you're one of those people out there waiting for you know Derek Carr to throw one of those big bombs and connect, it's going to happen sooner or later. It's going to happen, by the way, in New England when the Raiders go into Foxborough and beat the New England Patriots my Super Bowl. I hate the Patriots more than anyone in the world. The Patriots, to me, are scum. I hate the New England. I live in New England. Let's make that clear. I love New England. I wouldn't move out of here for nothing. I don't like California. I don't like Las Vegas. I like having four seasons. I like having a real time zone, real football time zone. But I hate the teams here. Well, not all teams. I mean, I don't like, I don't mind the self. I don't really watch basketball. But the Patriots, I don't like the Patriots at all. Why? Because I know they cheat, for a fact, and they're fans. Patriots have the most ignorant, n dummy fans in the world. They have no knowledge of the game. It's so disrespectful to me. I can't even talk to a Patriots fan, and I know a lot of them, about football, because they're so dumb, they don't know anything about it. They don't even know guys on their own team. They still think Wes Welker plays on the New England Patriots. And that's just the way they are. They don't know anyone. They're a little confused this season because they see Cam Newton. They don't even, half of them don't even know Cam Newton's been in the league for the last ooh, how many years. They don't even know. They just think he's a rookie. They have no idea. They, they don't know anything about football. And listen, no one can tell me that I'm wrong about this because I have no, I live here. My family owned a sports bar. I would talk to these people. I've watched people come in when I was a kid wearing Dallas Cowboys jackets Pittsburgh Steelers jackets, and then when the Patriots started winning Super Bowls, they would come in wearing their Patriots jackets, and I would ask them, what happened? I thought you were a Cowboys fan. I thought you were a Steelers fan. Oh, no, no, no. This is what they, this is their big line. No, no, no. That's my second favorite team. I've been always been a Patriot fan first. Really? Where were you when Scott Zolak was throwing the football? You were nowhere to be found. You guys showed up a little bit during Drew Bledsoe's era. A little bit. Some. Some of them. But for the most part, they didn't show up until the Raiders got screwed in a tuck rule. That year. That season. When the Patriots made the playoffs. That's when they started showing up. Oh, look. They're good again. So let's all start buying tickets. Now everyone's a Patriots fan. Everyone's a Patriot fan now. That lives around here. Meanwhile, they know nothing about football. They only know their own players on their team. They really don't. I mean... 
if you ask them, they probably think Ted Johnson's still a linebacker. I know more about the New England Patriots than they, than they do. That's a fact. That's a fact. And I'm telling you, I mean, maybe it's just only Western Massachusetts that are so dumb. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just telling you, these people aren't very bright. They're kind of like the Chiefs fans. Remember the opening night this year when the Chiefs played the Texans? Deshaun Watson, Watson and Patrick Mahomes were out there just doing nothing. They weren't protesting or anything. But yet they're getting booed. No one knows what they were booing about. Who, does anyone know what the hell these guys were booing about? The commentators certainly didn't know. They were confused. I'm still confused. But I just, I guess, I, I guess the answer is they're just Chiefs fans. They're dumb. They're stupid. They're not as intelligent as us. Raider fans, let me tell you something about Raider fans. This is one of the reasons why I chose to cover the Raiders. They are their most knowledgeable fan base in the National Football League. They know every player on their roster. The hell, they even know the practice squad team. Not many fan bases in the NFL are that knowledgeable. Maybe Packer fans. But that's about it. Raider fans don't get the credit. Instead, they get called thugs and all this kind of nonsense. When that's, I mean, it's so dumb. Most of those people who, uh, you know, just wear Raider gear that are thugs that whatever, you know, are in gangs or stuff. They're just wearing it because they like the logo. They're not actual fans. You know, they're not actually, you know, back in the 90s saying, you know, James Jett is my favorite wide, wide receiver in the National Football League. They don't, they don't know who James Jett is. You know, they're not saying, you know, Vince Evans is the ageless wonder. He's an awesome backup quarterback. They, you know, they don't know who Vince Evans is. You know, they don't even know who Charlie Gardner is. But 99.9% .9 of the Raider fan base do. And they love those guys. They love them. They love Jeff Hostetler. They love the Haas. Hell, they even love Jeff George. They thought Kerry Collins had a great arm. They love Derek Carr. Even though Derek Carr thinks some don't love him. They like him. They just want Derek Carr to win. That's where Derek Carr gets confused. He thinks people hate him. Meanwhile, people just want the guy to win. The Raider fans get sick of losing after a while. It was acceptable for a little bit. Well, about I would say about eight years where Raider fans just took it. They they It's like they didn't care about losing. Win, lose, or tie. Raider nation till you die. That's what they would say, right? Then I came along and I slapped the reality into most of all these people. Losing is unacceptable. Maybe it's because I do live in New England and I do watch the Patriots win Super Bowls after Super Bowls after Super Bowl. I don't accept losing. I like a winning franchise. I like watching a winning team. The Raiders are 2-0 right now. They are they're undefeated as the Las Vegas Raiders. And that will continue when they head into Foxborough. They took care of their jobs against the Saints. Yes, the defense was not perfect. Yes, they didn't get a pass rush. But the offense was just too explosive for that Saints defense. Now, eventually, the Raiders defense is going to have to step it up more if they want to really, really be, you know, a legit contender. Now, they beat a team that no one thought they could beat. And like I said, they probably could have beat this team by more than 10 points. They probably could have beat them by 21. The Raiders left points off the scoreboard. There's no, no doubt about it. But now, that is done. That is over. Now, on a short week, can Derek Carr travel to New England and beat Bill Belichick in his defense? Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. The only thing that worries me about this game is Bill Belichick and his defense with his linebackers. We know what, we know what he does. We know he's going to be dissecting Derek Carr, his, his tendencies. We know he's going to be faking with a linebacker blitz. He's going to be dropping them back in coverage. We know all that. Bill Belichick is going to look at Derek Carr, look at his weaknesses from the last couple of years, and try to exploit that. Meanwhile, John Gruden is going to look at the New England Patriots defense and try to exploit that. It's Gruden's ego versus Belichick's ego. And trust me, John Gruden wants to win this game more than anyone. He is still pissed off about the tuck rule when the Raiders got robbed. They got robbed of a Super Bowl. And make no mistake about it, the Raiders would have won the Super Bowl that season with that team. But you got to remember something. This is a team that has to play better on defense. Derek Carr has to play very good. 
Yes, he has been playing well. But really, I mean, it's just the scheme. Any quarterback can do what Derek Carr is doing. I wish Derek Carr would take it to the next level. I really do. The order, if Derek Carr would use his legs, he could take this offense into a whole new territory. Like, be unstoppable. The Raiders would be legit Super Bowl contenders if Derek Carr used his legs. I'm telling you right now, he would. He doesn't have to do much in his offense. It is short passes, but I don't care. That's, that's the thing. I don't care. I don't care about his QB rating. I don't care about his stats. I don't care how long he throws the football, how far he throws the football. The only thing I care about at the end of the game is the wins and the loss. Do, do the Raiders have more points than the other team? That's the only thing I care about. I don't care if Derek Carr throws for 13 yards the entire game. At the end of the game, who has more points? If the Raiders have more points, then Derek Carr is the better quarterback. That's how I judge quarterbacks. By wins and losses, not by stats, not by QB ratings. I could give, I could care less. I don't care. I care about winning. That's the only thing I care about. And I think Derek Carr and myself are on the same page here. Winning cures all. If he wants to silence the critics, he doesn't have to do much. Just stick to the game plan. Stick to what Gruden is telling you. Don't audible out of too much stuff because I watched that against the Saints. I seen him audible out of a few plays that did not turn out too well. Just stick to the game plan and you will be fine. Now, sometimes, obviously, you're going to have to audible. There's no doubt about it. But you got audible into the right play. And once Derek Carr figures that out, remember, it was it's only week two, guys. If he can figure that out, hopefully week three, and he can get this going, he can hit Henry Ruggs on those big bombs. I know people want to see Henry Ruggs get that ball. I understand that. He will be able, especially against the Patriots, to hit Henry Ruggs on those long, long, deep passes. Now, he's got to connect with him. He can't overthrow him like he's done in the last two games. But in this game against the New England Patriots, my Super Bowl, Henry Ruggs is going to be open. That play, that streak where he just runs down the field where he takes the top off, it's going to be there. It's going to be there probably around two or three times. There is a chance in this game off the play action that Henry Ruggs will be open for a touchdown because his he's too fast for all of these Patriots cornerbacks and their safeties, especially if things get me- mi- uh, mixed up in the defense and all of a sudden there's safety on top of uh, Ruggs. Ruggs is going to blow the top right off that safety and be wide open off the play action. So if Josh Jacobs can, hopefully he's okay, he can just keep running off of this defense. And I think the Raiders stand a good chance of being able to run Jacobs down Belichick's defense throats over and over and over and over again. Then it will open up the play action. Then you can either hit Waller, who's going to be unstoppable. There's no one on that defense that's going to be able to stop Darren Waller. I'm telling you right now. Raiders are going to be able to score a lot of points. If Derek Carr is accurate and he doesn't let Belichick in his head with all these stupid little designs, all these fake little schemes he's going to be doing, if that does not get in his head, he is going to be able to carve up that Belichick's defense, that Patriot defense. And as far as the Raiders' defense goes against the Patriots, yes, the Patriots have Cam Newton. Yes, they got to be careful. Max Crosby, you got to start sacking people, by the way. You got to be careful Cam Newton doesn't take off and run with it. He's going to do that a lot on the Raiders. I'm telling you right now. That is going to be Belichick's plan. Have Cam Newton take off and run with it. Because there's too many opportunities around the edges. That's why so many teams are throwing bubble screens against the Raiders. Or they're just running it to the right or the left. And they've been really carving the Raiders up there. But the weakest part of the field for the Raiders has been the middle of the field. Drew Brees just showed that last um, a Monday night. That continues to be a problem. And unfortunately, that's where Cam Newton throws the, is going to be throwing the ball a lot. He's going to be throwing slants to Edelman and guys like that. Right into the middle of the field. So, against the Saints, Nicholas Morrow got that big interception. Who deserves all the kudos in the world for that? Nicholas Morrow, I mean, this guy had to deal with a lot. Remember, he's not the greatest linebacker in the world. But he probably, he got that interception against the Saints. Play of the game, I said. Play it again. Play it again. So, he, those guys, those linebackers, they got to be ready. Because Cam Newton makes a lot of stupid decisions sometimes. But he throws in the middle of the field a lot. They got to have their hands up. Paul Gunther's got to be preaching all week long. Get your hands in the air. Because there's a pretty good chance that these linebackers can come up with some interceptions off of Cam Newton. That will dictate the game. The turnover battle. 
can Josh Jacobs run off the Patriots defense? If Josh Jacobs can run off the Patriots defense, that will set up the play action and the Raiders can win. And I need the Raiders to win this game. I've been talking a lot of trash. I'm going to continue to talk trash all during this week. So don't let me down, Derek Carr, because I am going to judge you off of this game. And if you win this game for me, Derek Carr, I promise you this. I will not say a bad word about you the entire season. I will have nothing to complain about because this is my Super Bowl. This is the game. This is where I'm going to know if Derek Carr is indeed the franchise quarterback. Now, he's getting paid like one. Can he play like one? Can he go into New England on a short week, on an early game, and beat Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots? If they can do that, the Raiders are for real. They're going to make the playoffs. They are going to be a very, very good team. And I know they're going to do that, by the way. I know they're capable of doing that. I know they can do that. I watched this Patriots team. I just dissected both of these games they just played. They're not that good. They're really not. They played against Carolina, where Carolina's defense is very, very bad. This team, the Raiders can beat them. Patriots played against the Dolphins, okay? Remember, this is why I hate the Patriots, too. They play in the easiest division in football for the last 15 years. If the Raiders were in that division, they would have, they would be a pretty average team in the last decade. I mean, seriously. So the Raiders got to go in there and they just got to smack them right in the mouth. That's what they got to do. Josh Jacobs, Waller, Ruggs over the top. Nelson Algogor, he'll be open as well. Hunter Renfro, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he can play. I think he's going to be a matchup nightmare for Belichick. Now, Gruden has his own little white wide receiver in Renfro. We know Belichick likes those guys. The Raiders are going are to have a little problems, I think, with Edelman. I really do. That's why these linebackers got to be prepared. They got to be ready. I have a feeling, I have a feeling it might be a high-scoring affair. I do. But I trust the Raiders' offense more than I trust the Patriots' offense. Uh, Gruden versus Belichick. Ego versus ego. Gruden's been thinking about that tuck rule every day of his life. He wants revenge. This is the game to do it. And remember, the Raiders actually went into New England... With Derek Carr a few years ago. They lost the game. But if you go back and look at the highlights of that game, they got robbed. They called a, a holding call on Gabe Jackson in the end zone. I think it was Darren McFadden that scored, I believe. I don't remember. But it was someone, some running back. Scored a touchdown, and they called it back. It may have been, may have been Latavius Murray. I really don't remember. All I know is they called a holding call in the end zone, which really shouldn't have been called. And the Raiders probably should have won that game. So I know Derek Carr can do this. I know he can beat Belichick. If you play smart, the Raiders can win. And I'm counting on that. I'm banking on that. And we all need that. We need a Raiders victory in New England. And when they do, I will be celebrating. And I will be talking trash all week long. Because it will make my whole year. This is my Super Bowl, guys. Can Derek Carr do it for me? Yes, he can. The Raiders are 2-0. They are undefeated. They will be 3-0. and And then... We'll take it from there, one game at a time. Let's keep stacking up the W's as we go and see how far this team can go. The defense needs to get a pass rush, no doubt about it. But as long as we're winning, that's all that matters to me. My name is Stephen Michaels. This is the Raiders Daily Podcast.